All right, let's start with this. Lincoln Riley to USC, and I heard some Sooner fans saying, hey, Lincoln Riley, his teams are a little soft. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, well, they always run the ball really well. They're, yes. they're not just a passing offense. It starts with the run game. So what do you make of him coming to SC? What will they look like and how long will it take? I think he's going to make them in, in his image. It'll look a lot like what OU looked like. Um, I think that his biggest challenge is going to be finding the right combination on the offensive line as far as the immediate challenge, you yeah. know, be, because his system is run oriented and they're more successful and have been more successful when they can run it. Uh, efficiently. And that was part of their downfall. If you want to call it that this year at Oklahoma is that they didn't run it as dominantly as they have in the past was one of their weaker O lines. It was, they, they, they hadn't quite developed it. It just wasn't, it was one of those years that you caught it perfectly and they just weren't as dominant as what they have been over the last few, but that's what he's going to be trying to do at USC. And he'll be able to do that. This is so fascinating to me because it makes not just USC, but the West coast relevant in college football, right? It has been, and and everyone, you know, like the Pac-12 people, they they are on eggshells all the time about just the overarching stature of their conference, you yeah. know, and they're they're just so anxiety ridden about yeah. getting credit or being at the. Here's the bottom line: this conference has been somewhat irrelevant for the better part of a decade, outside of a couple of years where Marcus Mariota was great or Peterson made a run with Washington. Yeah. But outside of that, it, it it has not been good. And and this makes not only USC, but the entire footprint relevant. And, and I think that the dominoes that we see from this over the next couple of years are going to be substantial. If you look around college football right now, folks, you've got players and impactful ones all over the country that are from the Pac-12 footprint, not just Southern California, although a lot of them are from Southern California, but the, but the footprint. Just think of just the top end. I mean, C.J. Stroud and Chris Olave at Ohio State. They also got the number one wide receiver in the country out of the Seattle area in Emeka Abuka last year. They got the number one defensive end out of the country out of the Seattle area in J.T. Tui Molo-Al. That's just Ohio State. You've got Bryce Young at Alabama. You've got... Let's see. Spencer Rattler was an Arizona kid. He was at Oklahoma. You've got B. John Robinson, one of the best running backs. He was a, an Arizona guy. You've got DJ Uyunglele. They're all oh, they're littering college football. If you were to talk with with top line coaches in two thousand seven, eight, nine, you know what they would have said about like, hey, are you going to go recruit that kid in L.A.? Why? It's not worth my time. There's a fence built around the LA area and the Southern California area because Pete's not letting that kid go. That's right. And and you know, Urban Meyer said I wouldn't even attempt to come in Southern Ed, California. Ed Orgeron told me once they used to laugh when they would go to high school games and see Ohio State and Michigan out here. They would laugh. They're right, like, because they had no shot. Ch- no shot to get any of the best players. So if they can do that, and that's an if, right? Because those programs are great programs, certainly, and have have a lot of momentum going right now. But if they can do that, what they will quickly establish is a marquee top-end college football presence on the West Coast, which we haven't had for the better part of a decade. And I think that's important for the sport as a whole. Yeah. Um, All right, Brian Kelly to LSU. It's funny, I hear this. You know, it's a weird fit. And I'm like, win 11 games, it's not weird. Well, he's going to win games. He is going to win games. He's, he's, uh, listen. He's a really good coach. He's a he's a great coach. I'll go I'll go in the great category. I think Brian Kelly is a great coach. Culturally, it's a completely different environment. Yeah. Notre Dame and LSU. So is I think Oklahoma that we can and LA. Uh, Oklahoma and LA. Um, folks, does it really matter when someone puts a hundred million dollars in front of you if it's the best fit? I don't think it does. I don't think it does. I think he was. A hundred percent honest with everybody in the room a while back when he said, listen, unless there's a fairy godmother and my wife and I have a conversation about some blank check, yeah, I'm going to be at Notre Dame. That wasn't a lie. And the fairy godmother happened to be wearing purple and yellow. Yeah. And folks, every one of us is for sale. You might not want to hear that, but it's true. Every single one of us that are listening are for sale in our careers. Colin, you were for sale. Joy, yeah. you're for, I'm for sale. That's just the nature of it. And guess what happens? There's two reasons why that's not going to happen for you or won't happen for you. 
you're either not valuable enough to leverage that for sale, or two, you have some contractual obligation that prevents you from going in that direction. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Or else everybody is for sale. So if you get that contract, you're moving too. So cast the first stone if you're the one that's not going to move, okay? Yeah, when I go to Twitter and people rip people for moving, I'm like, oh, so you're not talented enough to get offers. Because Chris Rock, that's a one of the as reasons. loyal as his options. You're that's as loyal a, as your options. great philosopher, Chris Rock. Now, man's as loyal as his options. The, the, the other aspect of that, though, is the contractual piece. So let me just, for, for a moment, college football is broken. Lincoln Riley just admitted to me upstairs. I sat with him. You can go, you can check out the interview. I know he sat with you as well. And I asked him, I said, listen, is it discouraging that you have to make this decision which, within this structure, which then makes you out to be the bad guy for doing exactly what everybody else would do? Yeah. And yes, that's the problem. The structure of the sport is totally broken because as I've argued on this show several times, we don't have an overarching entity that's yeah. looking out for the whole. So yeah. everybody acts in their own best interest in that, college football, by, period. By the way, that was boxing in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and why the US, UFC emerged is that boxers were just about Don King cared about Don, Bob Arum cared about Bob, and that was the – but this is a day to celebrate college football. No, I, I, yeah. I, but, I, but I am. I'm telling you that if, if this if – this, is not how you want it to happen. And I don't think even Co – Brian Kelly doesn't want to do it this way. Lincoln Riley doesn't want to do it this way. Yeah. So all you have to do is create more of an NFL model where you have tampering periods and you have structure to the sport. Put okay. guard ra guardrails on the schedule of the sport. There should be no early recruiting period where you're signing guys oh, in the early that. December because this is the product of that. Yeah. You fire guys in September and you've got to hire them before December. Yeah. Th that's why this yes. went down the way it did. It's yeah. not Lincoln Riley's fault. No. And it's not Brian Kelly's that's fault. That's right. The, the, the early signing period. USC had to get a coach in in 48 hours. I mean, that's the way it is. Oh, okay, so uh, it's a really good year for candidates. Uh, by the way, Urban Meyer said today, and, and I know Ner Urban well enough, I've been saying this for months. He's like, I'm not going back to college football. It ain't happening. No. I've done it twice. I'm out. I got my money. So Urban's not going back. Matt Rule, Kingsbury, we'll see. But let's talk Oklahoma, and let's talk Notre Dame. I think it's still. I think Luke Fickle is an unbelievable candidate. Yes. I think Matt Campbell's an unbelievable candidate. I, I do worry that Marcus Freeman, your first job being Notre Dame. That, that would be tough. It's a hard, most first-time Notre Dame coaches have not worked. It's too much. It's a labyrinth of hurdles to jump over. I could see Marcus Freeman being the interim coach for Notre Dame, and I could see he and Fickle switching in the offseason. And Marcus Freeman gets his first opportunity with Cincinnati because that job opened because Luke Fickle took the Notre Dame job. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I also think that for Oklahoma, I think that Matt Campbell fits well there, folks. I mean, he understands the Big 12, knows how to win in the Big 12. Yeah. He knows how to develop. That's what I, I thought. like Matt Campbell there a lot. Brent Venables is a guy that yeah. I think would be wildly popular, in particular with the former players at Oklahoma, having been the defensive coordinator there uh, a while back. So I think Brent Venables is a great candidate for Oklahoma or Matt Campbell. I think those are home runs, by the yeah. way. And I think that they can continue to move forward and be quality programs. Okay, so you know, you never want to be uh, recency bias, and you don't want <laughs> to overreact but when i watch michigan just 1988 roll over ohio state I, I said to myself it doesn't mean they're going to win every year but what they've established is for the first time in harbaugh's reign is an identity they've always had great old linemen they've always had good backs and i watched that game and i'm like i'm not saying you're going to duplicate that in columbus but that looked like Michigan football. Like, we are, we're going to have four totally. NFL first-round O-linemen. We can get that now. We're going to have an NFL tight end, an NFL back. We may not have the corners that Alabama does. But can you stop our run? Can you deal with us at the line of scrimmage? In cold weather. Oh, I mean, first of all, the scene was incredible. That was the best environment I've ever been at um, in, in any sport, any level. It, it was absolutely phenomenal. I thought that the crowd was great. The snow added to it, obviously, and they did exactly what they needed to do. Ohio State came into this game with a lot of confidence. There's no doubt about yeah. that. But they were banged up on defense, yeah. in particular at linebacker. And, and they had to play in the last quarter with basically a nickel defense on the field at all times. And guess what Josh Gaddis did for Michigan? He said, I see your structural deficiency. Nickel defense meaning you only have two linebackers and five DBs. And, and he said, I see your structural deficiencies, 
And on the last drive, they didn't throw a pass. Nope. This is a huge credit to Josh Gaddis, the offense coordinator, who was a, a, a Broyles Award finalist for the top assistant in college football, because he understood what was on the field and what was happening. And he said to himself, I don't need to need. I don't even need to put the ball in harm's way. I can just go out there and run the football right down the field, and they were able to do that. That was a great identity, like you said. And what's so fascinating for me is that Jim Harbaugh, who had to chase a few things during this tenure at Michigan, he kind of chased def defense. Okay, I got to get Don Brown to stop Ohio State, and then that didn't work. So he gets Mike McDonald. And then he chased Josh Gaddis to go to the spread offense, and then he had to marry it back to, you know what that was? Stanford beating USC yeah. in the Coliseum. That's that, what he went back to yeah. like what made him great that was to begin with. That's exactly what it was. It was incredible that just the 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 physical domination at the line of By scrimmage. The way, all these, you know, it's funny about all this stuff. So y'all wanted Harbaugh gone. Y'all wanted Brian Kelly gone. Our phones have made us so impatient. I won't read the article. <laughs> I just want the headline. That's and right. you've got to win today. Today. All you Brian Kelly critics and Harbaugh critics, you must have a power outage in your hometown because I didn't see a tweet this weekend. Can we give these coaches? Dabo Sweeney took four years at Clemson. What do you? Chip Kelly won eight games. Their football stadium's forty-five minutes up the road. I, these fans are nuts. Nuts. And I think that's one of the benefits. I know that I'm, this is crazy saying this. This is one of the benefits in these ADs doing such horribly one-sided contracts with their coaches. Because these contracts are so one-sided, folks. When you actually see the language oh, I can leave and the I fine want. print, they can leave anytime they want, speaking of the coaches, and the schools would have to buy out for 50, 60, 70 million dollars, <laughs> right? I mean, it's it's a wild one-sided. But what, what we're going to start getting is is less of that, less of like, well, we're just going to make a move because no one's going to be like, let's write a $75 million check or an $80 million right. check. That's not going to happen. So at least with some of these 10-year contracts like Mel, Mel Tucker got at Michigan State or now as reported with LSU and potentially USC, at least you're going to have this thing where it's like, he's going to be here for five years. He's going to be here for six years because yeah. guess, guess what? Even after year six, Mel Tucker the, and James Franklin got a 10-year deal. You know, James Franklin, if they try to fire him after year six in this contract, they have to pay him $32 million wow. after six years. That's how one-sided these contracts are. Do you know but at least you'll get some patience now because it's like you can't do anything. Hey, if Fox fires me tomorrow, I got a can of salted peanuts and a bus past <laughs> El Paso. Uh, my contract is ironclad. Okay, Clat, let me look at your top ten. Aren't they unveiling the playoff thing tonight? Tonight, yes. Normally I'm in on Wednesday, but we had Lincoln in town in the building, so I had to come in on a Tuesday. Uh, let's see Clat's uh, top. Let me just let me judge. There's this. my top ten. Please do live judge judge away. You're going to like it. I, what, what I, is I it? would have Oklahoma State above Notre Dame. Otherwise, I love it. Okay. I, you know, I, you I could argue I, me into that position. No, I, we, I, Joy was my witness. I said three weeks ago, Oklahoma State's the most underrated team in the country. Well, I would have I would have Oklahoma State six, uh, Notre, Notre, uh, Oklahoma State five, Notre Dame six, and I'm totally okay with that. Yeah, people were after me about Utah and, oh, they've lost so many. But if you've watched Utah over the last few weeks, yeah. they're absolutely a top 10 team or at least playing I don't, that listen, way. Listen, Cincinnati beat Notre Dame. I, I've said this before. I think Georgia, Michigan, Alabama, I don't have any argument. Cincinnati, the, it, listen, they beat Notre Dame at Notre Dame. I got no argument. Yeah, I, well, I mean, you can't say much about it. So he, here is what's going to happen, though. If you don't have any argument, then let's lay out what the path forward is. Georgia's win or lose, and you're probably in they're this in. week. Michigan, you're winning in. The, Alabama, winning in. Michigan is, will beat Iowa. I was a little worried. Oh, of course you're going to say that. You no, hate no, Iowa. No, no, I don't hate Iowa. Yes. No, no, no. Iowans, you know exactly what no, I'm talking no. about. I was there one time and had. One time. Well, listen, I'm a very busy man with a lot of options. I flew over at one time, and okay. I looked down, and it was gorgeous. I am not anti-Iowa. Uh, Iowa, there it is. But as America's honesty broker, you can't <laughs> throw out that fake ID. I'm a bouncer. I'm Ten like, wins. I'm sorry. That's not a driver's license. Get out of here. We have me. established that they are past the fake ID stage. Well, they still carry it with them, though. Occasionally, about twice a year, they got to pull it out and get whacked. Anyone worth their salt knows okay. that once you had a fake ID and not... once you graduated out of that, you got rid of it qu quickly. <laughs> now, I don't think Iowa matches up with Michigan. I thought Wisconsin matched up better, but yeah, Iowa I agree beat with that. I okay. agree with that. Iowa just I don't I don't know what they can bring to the table offensively, but that defense is sound and they can turn the the, the ball over. Okay. Michigan's playing for a playoff spot. Cincinnati's playing for a playoff spot. Okay. I think if Oklahoma State wins, I think Oklahoma State goes. Now, uh, I love recruiting. 
I know you do. Love it. And I almost jumped in the car with Lincoln Riley today. <laughs> do you he think? Was... I swear to God, I would have if Joy wasn't he, here. He did ask him if he could go. I know. Him I, I, heard, could go. I heard. I love it. I know. But I, let me let's just be a little bit of a homer because I only have one team left in America I care about emotionally, USC. Let me ask you this. Um, how do you go to a kid? Let's say I'm a big left tackle. Okay. Boy, USC could use one of those. I'm a big left tackle, and I committed to Oklahoma, and, and you're the coach, and then you got to call me because USC, you're now a Sooner, but yeah, how, do, how do you wiggle that phone call and I go to USC? It's very easy. I say, I'm Lincoln. I say, yo, you committed to me. You committed to me because of two reasons. I am going to help you win championships and go to the NFL. That's why you committed to me. Well, that sounds a little much. I, I don't think it I'm is. I'm more humble than that. I No, actually, you're not. <laughs> I'm America's honesty broker. You're welcome, America. <laughs> I don't know if I could say that. I don't know if I could say that. What? You, I don't think Colin could say that, actually. You, you're committed to me. I couldn't what do you say mean? That. That's, what, that's what college football is. I couldn't say that to a kid. You don't commit to the logo. You don't commit to the the facility. That's a big fallacy, folks. You what? commit to the coaching staff. All right. All right. You might not say it that way. Maybe that's why I'm not a coach. I couldn't. You know what? Because you could say that. I couldn't say it to a kid. You committed to me. You committed to me. Let's follow me and let's do something great. It sounds better out of your mouth. It just wouldn't sound good to me. I sound like a used car salesman. You want some brakes for that uh, Chrysler? During commercial breaks. That's why I tell Gus. <laughs> Gus, you committed to me. No. He would, look, he would slap me. All right, buddy. Great seeing you. You as well. Joy, great to see you. Hope you see guys you had a great holiday. What a great weekend. That scene, by the way. Oh, oh. the best. It was unbelievable. I love. I didn't even go to Michigan. My wife's from there. It was good. If you love the sport, not just your favorite team, it was good for the sport. It was great. It was great. Did you see the Time um, cover? No. Google it right now, everybody. The Time magazine cover. What it's is a it? Sh- it's a shot of Michigan Stadium with 100,000 people on the field. It's um, it's it's incredible. I saw it. I saw it on some social media. By the way, did, did all the wokey people say it's a super spreader or something, or is it a nice thing to say? Didn't didn't hear the wokey people. Well, you know, Fauci these... was in the back having <laughs> convulsions. <laughs> if you go watch a sporting event, you're going you, you, the whole world's ending. So My I just, goodness! I hope they were nice to Michigan fans. Great American sports it fans. It was just a, it, the listen, classy. Everything about Saturday was true Americana. Whether it was it was the game that I was at Bedlam later that night, the oh, Iron Bowl, the all of it. Those all are, of it was those incredible. are classy fans at Michigan. They're classy. Okay. I like Michigan. I fans. had a guy come up to me. He had a sweet mustache after the game. I really? just thought, you know what? That's a sweet mustache. Did you Good say for that to you. Him? I did. And did you say you were committed to me? Did you say that to him? Because that makes me uncomfortable. I didn't. He said something about like, hey, <laughs> make sure to, you know, keep your son in line on Wednesdays. And I was like, no problem. I'll tell Colin. Good seeing you, buddy. You too. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.